about a sermon that I just received about five minutes ago. So, <laughs> we're going to uh, look at the piece of Christmas. And uh, I'm not sure where this passage is that starts me off here. But uh, the angel... When they were with the shepherds, gave the announcement, Glory to God on high, and on earth, peace, goodwill to men. And there it is in Luke chapter 2. Let's pray. Father, I pray that you would anoint me to speak your word. Hallelujah. And Lord, anoint every person to hear your word. That it not fall on deaf ears. Or they not look at me as because they know me and my humanity. And cannot hear what the Holy Spirit says because of that. But because of the love of God and the great anointing of the Holy Spirit, open our ears that we can hear something today, something fresh from the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. We receive the word. We receive the word. Say, I receive the word. I receive the word. In Jesus' name. Hold your Bible. Say, this is my Bible. This is my Bible. Say, it's God's word to me. It's God's word to me. Say, I have what it says I have. I am what it says I am. And I can do what it says I can do. Do you believe that? Yes. Glory be to God that we're receiving that word this morning. Well, in Luke chapter 2, and if you want to uh, pull up the scriptures back there, Daniel, if you know how to do that on there. Luke chapter 2, we're going to look. Let's look. As Jesus was born. And lo the angel, verse 9. And uh, lo the angel of the Lord. Now that wasn't the angel's name. Angel of the Lord. No, it really wasn't. But anyway. And lo the angel of the Lord came upon them. And the glory of the Lord shone around about them. And they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. Uh, let, let me just uh, have a little pause here. The angel of the Lord said, Fear not, uh, for I bring you good tidings of great joy. Fear robs you of your joy. Fear robs you of your joy. And we don't have to be afraid because not only did the angel say, fear not, I bring you the tidings of great joy, which shall be to how many people? Oh. All people. That means you and me too, doesn't it? Well, great joy is our benefit in Christ. And anytime we don't have the great joy that we should have, the devil's trying to steal your joy. The devil wants to steal your joy. And you, you, if you hold tight enough to it, you're not going to let him steal it. Don't let the devil steal your joy. Do you know what causes our, sto our joy to be stole away is oftentimes this fear. We're afraid of it. Myriads of things. Do you know how many? In the, if you look in the encyclopedia of disorders and fears and phobias, there are so many fears. It's, I couldn't even begin to name one-tenth of them. You know? Agoraphobia, arachnophobia, phobiaphobia. That's a fear of fears. <laughs> There's just, but you know we all have fears. Every one of us has fears. The devil throws fears at us, and he locks fears into our subconscious. But I got this for us. We, anytime we start to feel afraid, we can say, ah, fear not. Or I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be of all people. Because whatever the devil is throwing at you that brings you fear, there's an answer for that. 
For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. What is the Savior? A Savior saves you from name your fear. Whatever it is. Whatever is bothering you. Whatever is stealing your joy. Whatever is causing your, uh, uh, your faith to be shaken and moved. We hold on to our Savior. And when you got your arms wrapped around Jesus, you can't really be afraid. It's when you turn loose of Jesus and start looking at your fear. It's like when, uh, when Peter fell in, uh, he sank into the water. When he started looking, remember how Jesus called to him and said, Come! And Peter started walking out on that water. And the Bible says that he noticed that the winds and the waves were blowing, and he became afraid, and what happened? He sank. And Jesus, thanks be to God, he, he, he grabbed him and he lifted, lifted him up. Like that old hymn says, he lifted me up from the deep, miry clay. He settled my feet on the rock today. Hallelujah. So he will lift us up when we're afraid. And, and you know, don't feel uh, guilty when, you, when you're attacked with fear. Amen. Just, just get up. Just grab a hold of Jesus Hand, let it pull you up out of that uh, depth, depth of water and depth of fear that you're in and put your arms back around him. Amen. Because when we got our arms around the Savior, we're going to be okay. Hallelujah. Lean on him. Uh, uh, let him be, the, you know, he can save us from as much as we let him save us from. Are you listening to me? He is our Savior. Yeah, he saves your soul and he's going to take you to heaven. But he wants to save you from a whole lot more than that. He wants to save you from yourself. He wants to save you from your fears. He wants to save you from the things that are, that are uh, taking your daily joy away from you. Because it's not God's will that we not work and walk in perfect joy. He said, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be... To all people, that's ours. Hallelujah. This Christmas season, we're going to have the joy of the Lord. Because we're going to cast all the fear off of us. We're going to jump in the arms of the Savior. We're not going to jump in Santa Claus' arms. Amen. We're going to jump in the arms of the Savior. <laughs> Amen. Santa Claus might be warm and fuzzy, but he can't save us. Amen. Jesus is only Jesus can save us from whatever's going on in our life. So let's lean on Jesus. Lean on Jesus. And this shall be a sign unto you. And of course, you know, they found it. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude. Not just a few, a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Look at the things that's God's will for us today. God's will is for us to have peace. He said, peace on earth. Now some of us think, well we think, glory be to God when I get to heaven. I'm going to have peace. Well I, I know that's right. <laughs> and I'm looking forward to that, aren't you? Yes. But this didn't say, I've got good news for you. You're going to have peace when you get to heaven. He said, peace on earth. Right here. Right now. Devil, take loose of my peace. It's mine. Peace on earth. Good will towards men. Do you know you can't have peace? When you don't have goodwill towards men. If there's somebody you're mad at today. If there's somebody you're hurt with today. 
You can't have that peace. The devil has used that person, has used that situation to steal your peace away from you. And there's only one way to get it back. That's to have goodwill towards them again. Now, everybody in this room, when I said, when I said that, you know somebody came to your mind. Something came to your mind where you don't have goodwill towards somebody. Every person in this room, I guarantee you. Maybe there might be a couple that aren't. But overall, all of us sometimes have something. And it just catches in our spirit. And we go, oh, I didn't even know that was there. Do you ever do that? Just says, I did not even know that was there. And then just some situation will bring it up. Glory be to God. Peace on earth. Good will toward men. And it came to pass the angels were gone away from them into heaven. The shepherds said to one another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem. And see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known to us. And they came with, uh, with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they seen it, they had known, shown abroad the same which was told to them concerning the child. And all that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things in her heart and pondered him, pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorying and glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told them. We've got to learn in, in, throughout our Christian walk to not let the devil steal from us. Um, John 10.10 10 is a familiar passage that we have, and all of us probably in this room can quote it. Maybe you don't know what the address of it is. We call it the address. Uh, but you may not know the uh, reference, John 10.10, 10, but you know that the thief cometh but to steal and kill and destroy. And I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. See, you know it. And, and, but the devil wants to steal our joy. The angel said we could have joy. The angel said the joy was for how many people? Aww. All people. And the angel said peace was to be in heaven, right? Oh, somebody said on earth over here. Peace on earth. So there's another thing that is promised to me. And the third thing is goodwill towards men. We've got to, during the Christmas season especially, I think it would be it would behoove us all to really, really focus in on what's important. Focus in on what will bring us the peace of God. And uh, one of the things that will bring us the peace of God is prayer. And we're going to get into that in just a minute. But first, before we do, I want us to turn to Psalms 119, 165. I hope that passage is right. I think I've got the right passage in my mind here. Let's see. What page? I'm not sure what page it is. <laughs> there it is. It is. I am right. Uh, great peace. Say peace. Peace. Psalms uh, 119, 165. Great peace. Peace have they which love thy law. Now, now not only did the, have the angels said that, that we could have peace on our earth and goodwill toward men, but here in the Psalms it tells us what kind of peace we can have. Great peace. You know what that means? That means it, well, like we sang about, peace like a river. An overflowing amount and a large abundance of peace. Hallelujah. A great abundance, a large amount of peace have they which love thy law. Hold it up. Say, I love your law. I love your law. I love your law. I love your law. Amen. 
sin. Does anybody know what the two laws that we that Jesus gave us to live by? Love your heart. Love God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, strength, Two laws. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. So, mind and strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. <clears throat> when we love these two laws and walk in these two laws, we're going to have great peace. We're not just going to have a little peace. We're not going to have shaky peace. We're not going to have peace that comes and goes, although we slip in and out of it, don't we? How many besides me slips in and out of it? And we don't. We slip in and out of it because you know why? We slip in and out of those two laws. We slip in and out of the love. It's all about love. It's all about the love walk. See, when we slip in and out of the love walk, we slip in and out of the great peace that's ours. So we're, we're going to ground ourselves in that love walk. We're going to ground ourselves in loving our neighbor as ourselves. And we're even going to go one step further. We're going to just go ahead and love our enemies. Yeah. We're going to just go ahead and love our enemies. Because then, then Jesus said that we'll have an extra blessing. Amen. I want that extra blessing. Listen, I'm the kind of person that I need lots of blessings. Because on my own, I messed up. I need lots of blessings. And to have that extra blessing, we're going to love our enemies. And he said if we love our enemies and do good to them, he said we would show what the Heavenly Father is like. He said because the Heavenly Father lets his sun shine on the good and he lets his sun shine on the bad. And he lets the rain come down on the good and he lets his rain come down on the evil. And so he's wanting us to show the reflection of the Heavenly Father everywhere that we go. And when we do that, we, we show that love forth. See, the, the great peace can't be taken away from you. That peace cannot be taken away from you. Now, uh, I want to look at um, uh, peace in Philippians, Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians chapter 4 for just a minute. I don't know, I'm not there yet. And let's look at <coughs> verse 6 and 7. And then we're going to go somewhere else in just a minute. I'm sorry. Uh, Philippians chapter 4. And then let's look at verse 6. And can you bring that up in the Amplified? You know how to turn that over to the Amplified Bible? <clears throat> now, the King James Version says this. We're, we're going to get down to the pieces. Be careful for nothing. Uh, that's kind of, we don't, we don't talk like that. But uh, what it actually says in the, in the Greek, it says, do not fret or have any anxiety about anything. Now, why don't we fret or have any anxiety about everything? Anything. Why? Because you can't fix it anyway. You've got to turn things over to God and let Him direct you. God has a, a, a work to do in a situation, and, he, and we have a work to do in a situation. But if we step over and try to take God's part and do His part, guess what? I forgot to mention this. You're not God. And so if you're trying to do God's part, you most likely are going to mess it up. <laughs> uh, you're not trained to be God. You don't know how to be God. So you just need to do your part over here. And your part over here, we're going to look at in a second. But you make sure you stay in your own business. So turn to your neighbor and say, mind your own business. Yeah, mind your own business. Don't mind God's business. Don't mind your neighbor's business. Mind your business and let God mind his business. 
Hallelujah. So it says, in the King James, be careful for nothing. Uh, in other words, don't be full of care. Don't be full of care or worry. But in everything, by prayer, say prayer. Prayer. And supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Here's the recipe for peace. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And here's the recipe for peace. I just was, I was, I was just praying. It, it, it was, it's pray. That's the P. Every time, always, casting your care every time. <coughs> and see, we, we cast our cares on the Lord, but sometimes we leave out the every time part. But see, it, he, here it says, it said, do not fret or have any anxiety about anything. And But now look at 1 Peter 5, 7. Is that the right one, 1 Peter 5, 7? Is, is that the one that says casting your care on the Lord? Sorry, I don't have any notes for this. Yep. Okay. First Peter 5, 7. And it's in the Amplified. Oh, that's the one I wanted. Casting the whole of your care. How much? The whole. The whole. Well, that's hard to do, isn't it? We really want to keep back just in case God don't do it the way we want. See, just in case. See, he don't do it just the way we like it. We just want to hold back enough of that that we can fix it, see. Because we think we're smart enough. Hope your neighbor and say, you're really not smart enough. Really not smart. No. <laughs> Amen. Isn't it the truth? <laughs> Come on. Casting the whole of your care. All your anxieties. Well, wonder what that means in the Greek. Do you have any Greek scholars here that could help me with the meaning of that word, all of your anxieties in the Greek? Because I know the, the meaning. It's the Greek word that means all. Everything. That means you don't hold nothing back. All of your anxieties, all your concerns... Once and for all over on, on, on him. We need to hit the altar more than we do. We literally, when we're in church, need to hit the altar more than we do. But we need to hit the altar more than we do daily at your home. You don't have to build an altar. Your altar can be your, your lazy boy. Or your altar can be your bed. or It can be wherever you make your altar. Amen? Amen. But we need to hit that altar and cast the whole of our care on him. We need to pray every time, always, casting all of our care on him every time. And then leave it there. That's how we're going to, get, that's how we're going to have peace. And, and it says, go back to uh, Philippians 4. Verse 7 again. And it says, And the peace of God. Verse uh, And God's peace shall be yours. Now this is interesting. I want you to think about this for just a minute. It says, God's peace shall be yours. Now, take just a second. It's going to go right over your head if you're not careful. He didn't say... Your peace would be yours. <coughs> he said, God's peace would be yours. Can you imagine how much peace God has? He is not worried about one single thing. He has no fret about tomorrow. He's not the least bit worried about whether his bills are going to get paid in heaven or the lights are going to stay on. Because he is the light. Amen? Yeah. And so this is the kind of peace we need. We don't, I don't want earthly peace. You know, some people get earthly peace from having so much money in the bank. Some people get earthly peace from having somebody in their life that uh, brings them fulfillment. Some people get peace uh, 
from uh, their, their job or some honor that they think that they have. But you know what? There's nothing that compares to the peace that God has. God has perfect peace. Thou will keep him in perfect peace, the scripture tells us, whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. I, I don't know where that passage is, but that's an exact quote of it without missing a word. Thou will keep him in perfect peace. See, there's a peace. If you know where it is, help me find it. Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind, say mind, mind, mind is stayed on thee. Somebody say to somebody, the mind is the problem. <laughs> Remember the, the, the college fund commercial? The mind is a terrible thing to waste. Uh, yeah, well, it is. And some of us have been wasting it. <laughs> Hallelujah. But we need not waste it on worrying. We need, need not work, waste it on tomorrow. Well, what if so-and-so dies? Well, what if they did? Are they going to go be with Jesus? And don't worry about it. Amen. It, don't, don't, don't take that upon yourself. You're not God Almighty. If they don't know Jesus, then claim them and go take the plan of salvation to them. Come get me. I'll go talk to them with you. I've got more people saved on their deathbed than you can shake a stick at. Isaiah 26, verse 3. Pull that up. Isaiah 26, verse 3. We're going to come back to this Philippians 4, 6, and 4, 7 again in a minute. 4, 3, what? 6. Isaiah 26, 3. And then uh, pull it up in the King James first, and then pull it up in Amplified. Thou will keep him. Say, that's me. That's me. That's me. That's me. In perfect peace, whose mind is stayed upon thee, because he trusteth in thee. Now put it in the Amplified. I'm going to see what the Amplified says. You will guard him and keep him in perfect and constant. Say constant. constant. Oh, constant. I like that. How many likes to just be up and down all day long on a roller coaster? In peace, out of peace. In peace, out of peace. Anybody like that? I don't like it. I don't like it. Now, I do it sometimes, but I do not like it. <laughs> but that's, you know why it is? Because my mind didn't stay on him. My not, mind is not stayed on the word. See, great peace have they that love thy word. We've got to get, get our thinking under control, people. And in, this Christmas time, we're just going to get our thinking under control. We're going to put all of our focus on him. We're going to cast all our care on him. We're going to take back what the, the joy the devil's tried to steal from us. We're going to take back the peace and the well-being. And if there's anybody that we're struggling with, we're just going to bless them. And if you're really, really having a hard time with them, give them a Christmas present. Glory be to God. <laughs> Amen. Do something. Didn't Jesus say that? He said, do good to them that Despite the illusion, but you got somebody that's just there. Oh, just give them. Now listen, if I give you a Christmas gift, it ain't because I'm mad at <laughs> you. will guard him and keep him in perfect and constant peace, whose mind, both in its inclination and its character, is stayed on you because he commits himself to you, leans on you, and hopes confidently in you. We got to have our mind stayed on him. We've got to be committed to him. We got to lean on him. And we have to hope in him. He's got to be, you know what? We as back to what I was talking about earlier, but we lean on a lot of things. Sometimes we lean on some person, don't we? And that person doesn't come through, do they? Guess what? 
Sometimes God didn't let that person come through so that you can learn to lean on Him. I'm learning to lean, learning to lean. I'm learning to lean on Jesus, finding more power than I ever dreamed. I'm learning to lean on Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's lean on Him. Let's lean on Him. And let's take back what the devil has stolen from us. Go back to, uh, back to Philippians 4, 7 again. And we're going to uh, finish this up in verse 7 and 8. That's fine, yeah. Thank you. And God's peace shall be yours, that tranquil state of a soul assured of its salvation through Christ. I like that word tranquil. Yeah. You, you, anybody ever taken a tranquilizer? Whoa. <laughs> that makes you feel tranquil, doesn't it? <laughs> anybody ever had a little, a little, little bit of morphine in the IV drip when you're in the hospital somewhere? Oh, that makes you feel tranquil. Right before I had the surgery, the doctor just shot me up real good with some uh, Valium. Uh, yeah. Oh, I was feeling so tranquil. Oh, uh -huh. that's right. Look, see, I could, the memory of it is still in my face. I was so tranquil. <laughs> Hallelujah. Guess what? Holy Ghost wants to shoot you up with... Holy Spirit tranquilizer. He wants you to be tranquil. He wants to give you the peace that passes all understanding. That tranquil state of a soul assured of its salvation through Christ. And so fearing nothing. Fearing what? Nothing. Nothing. So fearing what? Nothing. So fearing nothing from God and being content with his, uh oh, being content with his earthly lot. Well, I don't, oh my gosh, I don't have enough money this year to get my child an Xbox 360. <laughs> oh, give me a large break. <laughs> give me a large break. You forgot what Christmas is about. Or just up there and they said, well, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't have food when I was a kid. <laughs> when, when I was a child, I had to walk 20 miles and two feet of snow to get to school with no shoes. <laughs> I believe there's a, I believe that I, one of these comedian guys, Al, somebody, Weird Al, yeah, has a song called uh, "When I Was Your Age." When I was young, y'all get the YouTube that later. It's pretty good. <laughs> Hallelujah. Be content with whatever earthly lot you have. If all you can afford to get them is, is a couple pairs of nice clothes and some socks and whatever, then just thank, the, thank God that later on you're going to have more to give them. Don't let this Christmas be about things. Are you listening to me? Don't let this Christmas be about things. I've told my family this year I'm not getting them nothing. I'm not getting you anything for Christmas. I love you all. I'll make you a meal. But this year, there's a particular person that I know that has a major need, and I'm putting anything that I can get towards that. That's just what I'm doing. So the rest of you will just have to suffer with all the little bitty bits of stuff that you have. My family is so just, you know, deprived anyway. Poor little things. We're spoiled. We've got everything we need. We have everything we need, and we have more than we need. Are you listening to me? I don't need to get you something big to show you that I love you. You don't have to get your kids something big to show them that you love them. You know that? 
I don't not the only Christmas present I remember, remember as a kid, was my favorite thing was the incredible animals. Anybody remember incredible animals? Remember those little creepy crawly things? And you took a little tray and you put it in there and you cooked the plastic and the, and the, well they made the uh, edible version of that a couple years later and you put your gloop in there and you made these little things and you could eat them. It was like a jelly bean kind of thing. It was awesome. That was my favorite Christmas present. Incredible edibles. You can play with it, and when you're done playing with it, you can eat it. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I think that was probably a ten dollar gift back in that day. You know, probably ten or twenty dollars today. What I, I, I'm just saying. Listen, God's peace is going to be yours. If your Christmas, if your life, because it's like the sign says out here, put Christmas in every day. Yeah. Put Christmas in every day. Be content with this earthly lot, whatever sort that is, that peace. You know, there's some people that are not going to have. Vicky ain't going to have Kenny this, this mm. year for Christmas. You know, Kenya doesn't, doesn't have Steve this year. Your papa's gone to heaven. But you know what? This is going to be their best Christmas. It'll be their best Christmas. And if we can get out of ourselves long enough to rejoice with them, that'll be all right. It'll be hard to do, won't it? But we can do it. I just see my grandmother dancing with Jesus. Fishing in the river. Grandma's a fisher. Fisherman. Fisher lady. She was the best fisher person in our entire family. My grandma Goldie. And I could just see her out there <clears throat> casting that right in the river of life. She's up there with Jesus. Glory be to God. So I'm content that she's there, and I'm going to be joining her one of these days. Hallelujah. I'm going to be joining her one of these days. Content with that earthly lot, whatever sort that is. That's the kind of peace I want. Amen. Which transcends all understanding. <clears throat> People should come up to, to you and I and say, How are you so peaceful? How are you at peace? When I saw you this morning and you rejoicing as we were singing nothing but the blood of Jesus mm -hmm. and, and knowing that your husband just went to heaven this week. I thought that, that woman has got the peace of God on her. She was just worshiping the Lord. She's, and I went over to her and she said, me and my husband used to lead that song that Rich sang this morning. She said, thank you for that song. How many of you? Well, and, and she said, I feel like he's here with us. And I said, he is. Because we're encompassed with so great a cloud of witnesses that the ones that are in heaven are in Christ, and we're in Christ, and they're in us, and we're in them. Hallelujah. We're only separated by physical bodies. We're not separated in the spirit realm. Those of you that have, don't have somebody with you, and if you're missing them, just, just reach up and hug them in the spirit. Mm -hmm. Say, Jesus, pass this on. Amen. <coughs> Kenny's the first Christmas without his mama, too. But she's, she's having a good time. Amen. This kind of peace transcends all understanding. <laughs> And garrison and mount guard over your heart. See, our hearts needs to be guarded. In Christ Jesus. We can take the peace that the devil has tried to steal from us back. We can take the joy that the devil has tried to steal from us. We can take it back by praying every time always. Casting our care every time on oh, Jesus. Let's stand together. Oh, Father, we're so blessed today to be in your presence. We're so blessed today, Father, to be with this wonderful family of God. Thank you, Lord. Now, just let us right now, everyone, cast our cares upon him. I'm just going to ask you to come this morning. I'm going to ask you to come forward. And, and I, now I want you to open your eyes and look at me for a second. It, in, the, in the Hebrew, the, one of the words for praise is the same 
is, is the word casting. Casting your care on the Lord. It means to lift your hands, but it also means to thrust forward. And, and today, if you have a care or a worry or anxiety or a fear, I, we're not gonna stay, I'm not going to keep you all afternoon. I just want you to come. And you're going to play something softly on the piano. I just want you to come up around this altar area, any, on either side of the altar area, and just between you and the Lord now, I'm not going to lead you in a prayer. This is you. I might pray, but you just do whatever. I want you to take that care and that worry. I want you to cast it on the Lord. Just cast it on Him as a form of worship. But now get it said in your heart that you're really going to turn this up. You see, I'm preaching to myself. You know that, don't you? Because everything I tell you, you know I have to do it myself, right? Hallelujah. <laughs> so let's cast it on him today. Let's just take a couple more minutes. I know I know it's it's new, but it's not too late to cast your care on the Lord. Cast on your care. What can you add? What can you add? D. Cast all your care on him. For he cares for you. <coughs> Not that he He is our peace. He is our peace. Cast all your cares on him. For he careth for you. He is our peace. He is our peace. Cast all your care on him. For he careth. Oh, my child, you're ever in the palm of my hand. You're engraved in the palm of my hand. You're in my mind, you're in my thoughts, and you're in my heart, my child. Why do you worry about yourself when I, the Lord, when I, the Lord, when I, the Lord, take your cares and am watching over you? 
Let go of your fears and worries and grab a hope of my hand. I will walk with you. I will talk with you. I will even carry you when you cannot walk yourself. So is there something too big for me to handle? No. Give it to me and I will set you free. Cast all your cares on him for he careth for you. Sing it with me if you've learned it yet. He is our May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, you are dismissed. Oh.